Okay, welcome to the Florida Pro Real Estate Academy Math Review, and this is going to be number two. And what we're going to talk about a little bit is we're going to talk about the, the, the question that comes up quite often on the state exam and the end of course exam is the repaving of streets and what is the assessment, the special assessment, and how much is that going to cost. In addition to that, we're going to do a proration for rent uh, in a particular month, and we're going to come out with the answer for that. So we're going to calculate a proration and we're going to also do the repaving of the street question that seems to show up quite often on the state exam as well as the end of course exam. Okay, in this question what we're trying to determine is how much is the special assessment um, for paving on a lot that measures 120 feet by 200 feet. Well, what we want to do first, um, and this question is going to come up both in the state exam and more than likely in the end of course exam. If you have a lot that measures 120 feet by 200 feet, we are assuming that this lot is going to have 120 feet of frontage. Okay, when I say assuming, that's to determine that way. So the first number is going to be your frontage. So when you have uh, have it on the test make sure you take the 120 feet that's going to be your frontage so if you look down here we're showing 120 feet by a lot that's 200 feet deep okay so what we want to do to get this let's read the question the city is repaving the street in a neighborhood the city will assume 40 percent of the expense the city has approved the bid to pave the street at a cost of 30 dollars per linear foot correction 32 dollars per linear foot how much is this special assessment for the lot that measures 120 feet by 200 feet? Let's go ahead and break this down. Again, I encourage you to stay with the breakdown uh, when you're taking the state exam or the end of course exam and it makes things a lot easier. So let's break this down. What we need to do is we need to take the, uh, the number, the dollar number per linear foot. So in this case, they got a bid for $32 and we want to multiply that by 120 feet because the frontage in our lot here is 120 feet so if you take that and you the 32 and multiply it by 120 you come up with three thousand eight hundred and forty dollars that's going to be your first breakdown now the second portion of this what we need to do is we need to determine how much we're going to have to pay okay how much we're going to have to pay versus what the city's going to be paying okay so it's real important we know this now if the city is going to go ahead and pay 40% of it, that means we are going to have to pay the other half of that, which is going to be 60%, makes up the, the full amount. So the 60% makes up the full amount. So what we want to do to make that a decibel, we just do that 0 0.60. So let's take this. You got $3,840, and we want to multiply that by 60%. Uh, 0 .60, 0 .60, which is going to be the 60%, the other half, okay? That's going to come out to $2,304. Again, that really helps us out a lot. Um, they did pay 40%. We're only stuck on the 2304 our neighborhood is. Now, the good thing about a street is you only pay your portion of the street. Remember, you'll have people across the, the way uh, from you. Uh, and, it, and the state will go ahead and put in a park and that type of thing. You're not going to be responsible for that. So we only pay half of it. So we pay to the middle of the street and back to our driveway or whatever the case may be. So we're only paying, um, if you come over here, we're only paying a, just that front portion. So if it's, if it's $2,304, dollars we're going to end up taking that and we're going to divide that by two because remember we have a neighbor across the street that's going to pick up the other portion of that if we take the two thousand three hundred four dollars and divide that by two that's going to give us one thousand one hundred and fifty two dollars that's going to be how much our special assessment is uh, for a lot uh, that is 120 feet by 200 feet and the cost of that was $32 per linear foot, and the city assumed 40% of that. So just, again, follow this breakdown. It makes it very easy. A good problem to have when it comes to an exam because you can walk through it pretty easy and, and again, go back and forth and make sure uh, the, the numbers work. 
One thing I will caution you on, if you forget to put the two, you forget to divide it by two, chances are they're going to have this answer on the test as well, the 2304, because they're making sure that you understand that you have to divide by two to come up with the 1152. All right, that sounds good and looking forward to the next question. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is going to be a proration for rent, okay? And when a good thing about that is you don't have to do the annual numbers. You just have to do the month that the rent is due as, as far as the count. So let's take a look at the question. A residential investment property is scheduled to close on June 10th. The seller collected rent for June at the first of the month amounting to $1,050. According to the contract for sale and purchase, the buyer is due the rental income for the day of closing, which is on June 10th. So let's go ahead and calculate this proration. The very first thing we need to do is we need to determine how many days in June, okay? And there's a lot of different methods out there to remember this. Um, the knuckle method, take a look at some of the videos there. Or if you just memorize it that, hey, June has... 30 days, okay? So that would be a, a good thing. The problem with just memorizing it, when you get to the test, you might freeze up. So try to come up with a method to determine how many days. Now, if it's if you're counting prorations for rent, it's a month, it's not that bad. But when you're trying to count for annual, uh, such as taxes and that type of thing, it gets a little bit tricky. But again, just something you need to remember. Now, let's take a look at this problem. If we have a total of 30 days in June, and we know the closing date is going to be June 10th, right here, June 10th. And if you look up here, it says that the buyer is going to get the rent for that month, okay? So when we're doing it this way, when the, when the, when the um, buyer is going to be getting the monies, we're going to take it on the right side of the timeline, okay? So let's look at this. One thing we really need to make sure is we need to make sure we are counting the numbers correctly. Okay, so we've got June 10th through June 30th, which we're going to come back to is going to give you a total of 21 days. So let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, first, what we want to do is we want to take the amount of rent, which is $1,050, and we want to divide that by 30. That's the days in the month. So right here, we have actually $35 per day. That's what it costs for a person to stay there, $35 per day, whether it be the renter, the new buyer, whatever the case may be, is $35 per day. Now, we just take it one step further and we break it down and we have to determine there's 21 days that the new buyer is going to have. So, let's go ahead and count these. So, you have one, you have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, okay, 21 days. Now, be very careful you don't just take 30 and minus 10 and come up with 20 because it's going to throw you off. And on the state test, they will have uh, that answer there that's off by one day. So, remember, you got to count these out. However, you got to do it. Make sure you get uh, 21 days out of this. If this was the 11th, that would be a total of uh, 20 days, okay? So however you do it, you got to figure those out. It's not a bad idea just to count them out and tick them off, okay? Now, we have 21 days. We have to multiply that by $35, and that's going to come out to $735. So we know that that proration is going to be $735. Now, let's look at why it is or what it is. We know that the seller collected that money early on at the very beginning and they stayed in that place in that house for nine days so they're going to be required to make sure that um they they actually give up some money okay they they're going to have to give up some money so the buyer has from june 10th through the 30th so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to 21 days so this is actually going to be a debit to the seller, when you remember debit card, they're paying off to the buyer $735, okay? So $735 debit to the seller and credit to the buyer $735. Now, 
Listen, on the state test or the end of course exam, if these two numbers are not the same, in prorations, they have to be the same. If they're not the same, that's going to be a wrong answer. So if you see one that says 735 and 633, that's going to be a wrong answer. These are always going to be the same. Okay. Now, a debit to the seller, as we know, uh, in nine times out of ten, it's going to go that way with the exception of the purchase price and prepaids. So that's going to be, that would be a credit uh, to the seller. Uh, but in this case, it's going to be a debit to the seller, uh, a credit to the buyer because they're going to be getting that $735.